In this video, we're talking about tissue plasminogen activator, TPA, which is involved in the process of fibrinolysis or breaking down of a clot. So in, endogenously, TPA is released typically from the endothelial cells in response to injury. And the protease will go, the protease being TPA, will go and break down plasminogen into its active form of plasmin. And then plasmin will go and break down fibrin within the clot that's holding that insoluble mesh work together. And it breaks it down into fibrin degradation products, one of those being D-dimer. Um, and then plasmin will go and break down fibrinogen. Fibrinogen is that bridge that holds those aggregated platelets together. By, you have those 2B3A receptors bridged by the fibrinogen. So breaking down fibrinogen into fibrinogen degradation products, that's what these are, will actually help, you know, dissolve, kind of dissolve out that platelet plug within that fibrin mesh. And then plasmin also digests four of the blood coagulation proteins that are involved in the clot process, which is thrombin, two, and then five, seven, and eight as well. So we can administer TPA um, in an emergency setting under certain conditions as a thrombolytic agent. And, you know, exogenous administration of TPA can be typically given from uh, altaplace, retaplace, or tenecteplase. These are recombinant DNA tissue plasmin uh, created through recombinant DNA as tissue plasminogen activator. And these can go and dissolve clots. So if you've had a stroke and it's within the four hour window, you, you want to make sure it's not hemorrhagic, so you'd need a non-contrast CT first to rule that out because the last thing you want to do with a hemorrhagic stroke is cause more bleeding and complicate things worse. So if you've ruled that out and it's a ischemic stroke, that TPA can be administered to try to reperfuse the brain and limit the amount of necrosis in the brain. And then uh, coronary thrombosis, so if someone has a myocardial infarction and they just can't get a PCI for some reason or not in a, a hospital that can do that, uh, PCI being like a stent or a balloon arthroplasty to re reopen uh, the canal, then um, they can use tissue plasminogen activator to restore blood flow in that situation. Maybe a pulmonary embolism to dissolve the clot out there or deep vein thrombosis. So there's many different uses for TPA. Uh, I had a patient that had was recal recalcitrant to just the regular treatment after d developing a DVT um, after a knee arthroscopy. And so after about three months of just so much pain in his calf, it was a real bad symptomatic DVT. And he had pre a previous three months before that where he had, you know, those, those symptoms. We tried blood flow restriction exercise on an assault bike using the, the three limbs that were not where the DVT was. And so uh, literature showed that blood flow restriction exercise actually increases TPA naturally within the body. And so my rationale on that was maybe we can kind of elevate that TPA and get uh, that clot to dissolve out and prevent it from breaking off and becoming a PE or something like that. So uh, fortunately, in his case, it was associated with dissolution of his clot. So I wrote it up as a case study and it'll be published soon in JOSPT, but hopefully that could be something down the road that could be used to help uh, patients suffering from deep vein thrombosis. To learn more about the human body, subscribe, turn on those post notifications, give this video a big thumbs up. Bye!